Look, I want to move off that quickly to an issue which I think affects uh, almost all of us every day. Uh, you cannot open a paper, watch a news bulletin, listen to the radio without knowing that we are in a cost of living crisis. And much of that is happening in real terms for Kiwis at the supermarket at checkout. Uh, as fuel prices have gone up, as inflation has skyrocketed, uh, for many businesses and those involved in the supply chain, um, something has got to give, and most often it is prices uh, increasing. So I thought for an update on where things are at and what short to medium term prospects are like at the supermarket checkout, we would uh, get in Catherine Rich from the FGC, the Food and Grocery Council, to have a chat with us. Catherine, lovely to have you back with us. Welcome to the platform Thank again. Thank you very much. All right, what's happening? Because I do actually notice uh, fuel prices have softened a little bit. Are we going to see some relief at the checkout as a result of that or not? Uh, probably not, because fuel is actually just a small proportion of the product's final price. So um, I'm afraid there isn't much good news, Sean, because if you're looking about looking at inflation around the world and those cost pressures that are happening globally and locally, there's still that perfect storm. You look at every single input to food, Mm. And it's going up. And I've been talking to some of our member companies just in the last um, week. And one of the things they're talking about is the total squeeze on labour and getting staff. And they're actually paying more to get people to turn up and mm. to get, and even then, um, not being able to fill um, vacancies that they would have been able to fill two years ago. I don't know where people have gone, but mm. um, it's, it's a real squeeze. All right, does something like, for example, wheat production in Ukraine have any impact to you? Yes, it does. And I know some people have said, well, why is that? The thing ha that happened in the Ukraine and Russia, which is a big, big wheat producing area, when they couldn't get their crops in and they couldn't supply, what that did was put the pressure on wheat everywhere else in the globe. So it's not that we bring in product, much product from there. It's the fact that it puts pressure on the price of everything else, things like olive oil, sunflower. And so, I, you, know, you know, a lot of things in the food industry are very interconnected. Yeah. Things like packaging, fuel, utilities, That's fertilizer. not good news. Now, you've been in Europe and you've talked about the pressures we've got here with labour and everything. Is anything getting better in Europe? Can we look forward to an end of this well, problem? Well, from a COVID perspective, no one's talking about it. No one's wearing masks. People are just getting on with life. Even in the tube and the underground, uh, it's just not making the papers uh, compared to New Zealand where, you know, you're still seeing many people, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. just their daily focus. Well, supermarkets, you still have to wear a, a, yeah, a in mask the in the supermarket. Yeah, I'm not sure My why. glasses are still fogging up. <laughs> yeah, people with glasses, it's terrible. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think you need to wear a, a mask in the supermarket. I mean, if you're socially distanced... People have got, um, you know, uh, immunity. Um, but w there was mask wearing on planes yeah. and a bit of public transport, but that's it. The rest of the world's moved on. And I found that in many cases when I said I was from New Zealand, people, people do know that we have taken on this role of being the hermit kingdom. They're, they're shaking their heads a bit. <laughs> so we've been laughed at. Yeah, in some cases uh, for people who followed, you know, economic issues or knew of New Zealand... Um, in some cases, it was it was terrible to be openly mocked. <laughs> All right. But you are telling us price-wise, in terms of relief at the supermarket checkout, there's nothing on the horizon yet. Well, I think in some in some areas, there, um, there will be a, a softening of prices. Um, ocean shipping seems to be settling down. And if you remember, there was, um, in some cases, a 700% increase in prices of getting a container here. Things are settling down there. Um, I'm a bit worried about um, the labour shortages, as I mentioned. Packaging, I think that will settle down. We're starting to see the world get back to normal as the Northern Hemisphere starts to uh, behave a bit more normally and they're not not—they're focusing with, on getting on with life. All right. Can I ask you, is there any particular policy setting, if you're going to name one policy setting that could be different in New Zealand, which would get us some relief at the supermarket checkout quicker, what would it be? Well, if I could speak more generally for the food industry, um, I think one of the major policy settings government could do is they could make it easier to hire migrants.
because mm. if you've got a, a restaurant or a store or you're looking at casual labour in your bakery, for example, um, you know, the cost of you know, $620 for each application, for each person, the time it takes. I mean, a lot of food businesses need people now. And mm. the current migration settings make it incredibly hard to hire that backpacker who are hoping to come back to New Zealand to, to mm. fill, fulfil problems that we've got. You know, if I could wave a magic, magic wand, um, you know, w- wages um, should, you know, will be good to improve. I've just had um, a family member go from New Zealand to Australia, gone from twenty two fifty working in a supermarket to seventy eight dollars Australian driving a forklift. Night, wow. sh- night shift, admittedly, but <laughs> you know, I really worry about the um, numbers of our young people who are going to face that pressure of the better wages and salaries in Australia. All right. So you're saying getting more people in is actually vital. Getting more people in, I think um, it's important that we get as many New Zealanders back to work as possible because there are lots of vacancies and food businesses just can't find people. And it's meaning that in some cases there's short supply on the shelf. And baking, uh, the bakery industry is a good example of that. Yeah. There have been lots of short supply of um, uh, supplies of bread because they haven't had people on the production lines. And it's been the same in any food manufacturing business. All right. So we need more staff and we need probably more migrants to create more staff or more staff places. Yet we look at our migration statistics and we're losing people, aren't we? We are losing people. And I think um, we need to be have our eyes open that that's probably going to get worse because of those um, having Australia next door and also, I think um, we've got a lot of young people saying, I just want to get out of New Zealand, I want to get away from this COVID focus and get on and live my life. All right. Well, or are they just wanting to do their OE when there's been pent up demand for that? Because one would also imagine that in other parts of the world, there are a lot of people saying, I want to get out of Britain or I want to get out of Italy or France and I want to come down to New Zealand and experience that. This should be a two way street, shouldn't it? It should be a two way street. And I do hope the tourists will come back. But I think we've lost lost some of our standing in the world as a destination because we've made it, we've still made it quite hard for people to come. And the other thing I've, I noticed just as a traveller was just the cost of getting anywhere. You know, I think, and the, and the mass cancellation of flights, you know, it's not, it's going to be a lot harder for young people to do their OE until things settle down in the Northern Hemisphere. All right. Um, will the prices at the checkout, and I'm not someone who goes personally, who goes to the supermarket often if I can help it, are they ever going to wind back or they simply will stop rising? Well, um, th- there, was, there certainly have been a lot of costs that have gone through and people are noticing them at the checkout. But as I've said time and time again, you know, that the, the supermarkets could address some of their margins and uh, mm. decide to take a, a lesser margin. Yes, the costs have come through from, for, from suppliers for all of the reasons that I've, I've outlined. But of course, they continue to put their margins straight on the top. Uh, mm. We have the highest margins in the world yeah. for, for supermarkets. Competition will make a difference, but also I think, um, you know, I, I just want to, you know, ref- reflect on the fact that this is something that touches everybody's life. Yeah, Everybody does. notices and it's it. And what I've always said and about your group and your industry, man, you are. And you know, that, you know, that's it, where it happens. And it's hard, but we have some companies who are deciding whether or not to supply New Zealand. And there are some cases where we, where in, in order to import goods, um, the, you know, the international price is set in New Zealand. And, and we, we just have tough. to be price takers. Can I ask you, has the government's uh, rhetoric have the indications of policy change in terms of supermarket <coughs> competition and reform of the sector? Have they had any effect yet? And have those changes been properly signalled and are they being implemented at the right pace? Well, yes, I think because the government's flagged significant change, some of the worst behaviour has died down, which, yeah. is, which is good. But um, I, I think the entire, legal, uh, the entire framework has changed. We now have changes to the Commerce Act, changes to fair trading and a grocery code of conduct that's coming through. I have been very impressed with what the government has done mm. and we're just about to put our submission in on the grocery code of conduct and I think it will bring significant change. It's not going to make the grocery industry a picnic yeah. and um, you know, romantic walks on the beach and... Um, uh, 
But it yeah. might level the playing field a little bit. But it'll give suppliers the opportunity to point to something and say, you can't do that because that's unfair and unconscionable. Okay. And I think um, that will bring a change. And in advance of that change actually happening, you're saying some behaviours, some attitudes are already softening. Yes. Does that feed through? The well, question is, does that feed through to less price pressure at the checkout or not? Uh, it it doesn't, no. But what it does do is it means that the merchandiser who goes in on behalf of my member companies and puts product on the shelf uh, is less likely to be shouted at, bullied and treated badly. And I think part of what we were aiming to do was to get a cultural change to be able to say, look, this is, you know, 2022, behaviours from... Um, the last century aren't acceptable anymore, and I think that's positive. All right. Uh, and has there any um, tangible, uh, concrete indication that we're going to get more competition that anyone is opening up? Has as the sod been turned on any new supermarket chain in the country or not yet? Look, I, I've, I've heard lots of rumours. Um, I haven't seen anything tangible yet. I know there are lots of discussions. Um, global retailers are looking at New Zealand. That Certainly, for sure, we're seeing movement with Soup, Soupy. Uh, you'll see others. The warehouse continues to roll out its offering mm. with um, significant specials on key staples. So um, I, I am positive. I am optimistic. All right. Maybe it isn't all uh, bad news. Nice to have you back in the country, Catherine Rich. Thank you for joining us.